You know, my my own path uh, to Palestine was, I think, very different than many people's. Mine, I, I grew up in Canada. Uh, my parents, both of my parents uh, are Palestinians who hold Israeli citizenship. And both of them lived under the Israeli regime, the military system that was in place between 1948 and 1966. Both of them were born before the Nakba. In fact, my father was nine years old during the Nakba and, and would recount very, very, very vividly stories about what it was like to flee from his town, Ilim Jedil, to go to Nazareth and then flee again to Lebanon, to Syria, um, to Jordan, and then smuggle himself back in when he was a young child. So I grew up in an environment where, where for us, we, we were living the aftermath of the Nakba, but also living the presence of what it means to be, for my parents, what it meant for them to be citizens of the state of Israel. And, and, and they fled. I mean, they left the country because... ignorance that that entails um, growing up as, as a child in, in Canada. And so my journey to Palestine really came um, with, the, with the beginning of the First Intifada and what was happening there. And then from that, I, I mean, I still recall 30 years ago, the signing on the White House lawn, the, the way that my father reacted to that signing. I've seen people talk about how they felt very angry and and uh, and how they how they understood what Israel was going to do, including Edward Said among among others. But I can tell you from my father, being somebody who had lived under this system of oppression for such a long time, he was brought to tears. And the the reason that he was brought to tears was not because he had any faith that something was going to come of the negotiations, but because he he felt that for the first time in history, the world had finally recognized what Israel had done to him and to his to his family and to others. And so it was it was based on that 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 reaction that that he had, and my father since passed away. Um, but based on that reaction that I felt so moved that, I felt like, well, I'm I'm studying law. I I have this opportunity to to join the negotiations team, and and I naively, and I say this with all full knowledge, naively thought that something was going to come out of this, even though by the in the aftermath of of the signing of the Oslo Agreement in 1993 by 1994, Edward Said had, had come and had been speaking about it, and I read everything that he wrote. But there was still this level of young, you know, being naive that felt like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe something good will come of this. Maybe there will be um, some sort of an agreement. And I spent years really suspending logic. I did what I think the rest of the world is doing now when it comes to Gaza and what they, what they do now when it comes to Palestinians in general, that I suspended logic and thought, no, but you know, yes, this is a truth that I see, but the future is going to be better. It was a very neat, very naive approach um, to to my coming to Palestine. Very, very, very naive. And I'm I, I'm not ashamed to admit that I was naive. The problem then became became when I arrived in Palestine, I arrived the first day of the second intifada and was very quickly, um, very quickly confirmed my, those, those beliefs that I had, that I had suspended, the logic that I had suspended was suddenly coming to the fore. And I realized um, 
that everything from Edward Said and, and Brahim Abogrod and other, criti other critics, what they had been writing was actually correct. That, um, that the Oslo process, that the negotiations was really just a sham and it was a way of just masking and covering and giving cover to Israel to continue its colonization while framing us as a problem 